This week, the HPT returns to its Rocky Mountain home in Black Hawk, Colorado. For years, the HPT has been proud to call the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor its Colorado home. And this time, the Golden Gates Casino shattered all HPT records as almost 700 players built a million-dollar prize pool, the biggest prize pool in HPT history. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Hansen. With me, as always, is Fred Bevel, and we're ready to crown our newest HPT champion here in Black Hawk, Colorado tonight. We started with 668 players and six skilled and talented rounders made it to our televised final table, all with their eyes on the HPT championship and almost a $300,000 prize. Now only four remain, putting the coveted championship and life-changing money within reach. Lights, camera, poker. They come from all walks of life, each with a story to tell. All they need is a chip and a chair. It's an open casting call for those who love the game. This ain't your weekend home game. This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game, talk trash on your wall. To me, it's all the same, you won't leave with much when you come in second place. I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack on cry to your mama cause I'm sending you back I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Hello again and welcome to the HPT with Fred Bevel. I'm Chris Hansen. Welcome to Black Hawk, Colorado. This week we're at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor and it is our biggest prize pool ever on the HPT. Almost 700 players got together this weekend and put a million dollar prize pool together. And Fred, we're now down to four players and things are getting gut-wrenching watching these players at our final table. Well, they're playing for more money than they've ever played for in their lives, and they're doing it in front of a worldwide television audience. That makes it a little bit harder to play your hands when you add all of that together. So far, this final table's been playing a little bit tight, but now that we're short-handed, they need to release the beast in their game and go get some chips. Now, these four aren't very experienced in shorthanded play, so that's obviously easier said than done. Well, Fred, all the four players that are left are guaranteed $67,000. But then after that, third place pays almost ninety, dollars and then it really starts to get interesting <laughs> when you're playing easily for more than a yearly salary for most people, all on making a call or laying down or making a bluff. So, really, you got to figure that these players have got to take that into account. And, oh, yeah, at the end, the last man standing walks with almost $300 hundred thousand dollars let's meet the players that are left and then get right back to the action in seat number one this man has been the chip leader from the word go it's Craig Casino from Winfield Illinois he is a retired police officer also owns his own company and he is a certified arborist he is sitting with just over nine million in chips and this is Mary Flurkey in seat number two from Golden Colorado playing in her second HPT event we said so Mary how did the first one go and she said I don't want to talk about it <laughs> the second venture into the HPT is going much better for Mary this is Dan Herleman in seat number four, a poker professional from Tempe, Arizona. He made a little trek to come play in the HPT. You heard about our very first re-entry event, knew it was going to be huge, and he is sitting huge with over two million in chips. And finally, in seat five, it's Jimmy Frisk making his second appearance at an HPT final table. And Fred, imagine sitting down, playing for $300,000, knowing that you're in for only $480. That's what Jimmy Frisk is facing. Over $67,000 is guaranteed to these players left at the final table, but that's not what they're playing for, my friend. The top number, 293270 is going to our next champion. And now let's see what you got in front of you. Craig is our chip leader. He has over half the chips in play. It's roughly where he was at when we started this final table as far as the amount of chips in play and Mary is second in chips. Dan and Jimmy will be bringing up the rear. Thank you. The action is on Mary and Mary Folds. And we move over to... Action on Dan Herleman right now, professional poker player, also a doctor of pharmacy. Wakes up with ace queen suited, makes it 285,000 to go. Over to Jimmy, he will fold, and now to our chip leader. 
Craig Casino, four deuce. See his beautiful grandkids under his whole cam there. They've been with him this whole tournament. And I'd have to say they're pretty good luck. I might have to borrow that picture for the cash games later. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's really putting a lot of faith in that picture. He is going to make the call with Deuce Four. We have two players. He's got a lot of chips, and you know, if you play cards like Deuce Four yeah, offsuit, they're fairly easy to get away from if you don't hit them on the flop. And the flop is Jack Ace Nine. Case in point. Well, Dan hits top pair. He's going to try to get some value out of this. Unfortunately, Craig Casino with just four high <laughs> probably isn't going to put another chip into this pot. Two sixty. Two hundred and sixty thousand. Two hundred sixty thousand is the bet from Dan, and Craig will fold. Mr. Herleman picks up the first pot as we continue on tonight to a $293,000 championship. Mary Flurkey in the two seat has been very, very quiet at this final table so far. Dan has Ace Jack starting this next hand under the gun. Makes it 285000 over to Jimmy, playing at his second HPT final table. Made the first one right here at Golden Gates Casino in Blackhawk in 2009. Jimmy took fourth at that final table. He's looking to do better than that tonight. He folds, and now over to Craig. And Mr. Casino will call 8-9 offsuit. What a great last name. Casino? Really? So we have two players. If my last name was Casino, you know what I'd do for a living? What's that? I would open a casino. <laughs> I would call it Casino Casino. That's right. Casino's Casino. And here comes the flop. It is seven, deuce, queen, two hearts. No help for either of these players. Dan is ahead with ace high. Craig checks to Dan. Craig checks over Dan. Dan, Dan will checks. not make a continuation. Bet and checks. He's going to step wisely with the chip leader here. And the turn's another queen. Craig checks. Craig checks. Craig checks. Dan, ready to bet now? You've got two hearts, two clubs, and two queens on this board. And Dan. And he's going to check. And now let's see the river. The river is a six of hearts. And now Craig springs into action. Craig is going to wager. 350,000 is the bet. 50,000. Tough call for Dan to make here with just ace high. Let's see if he can sniff it out. Ace Jack looked pretty good pre-flop. Looked pretty good on the flop. Not bad after the turn, but but once you get to the river and now he bets into you. It doesn't look so good, but good enough to make a call with Ace High. Great call by the young pro. He is going to find out he's good, and he is going to scoop up pot off the chip leader. Let's go ahead. We'll call it the call of the night right there. I mean, that's a, a great call for the pro poker player from Tempe, Arizona. All right, back to the action. And Craig's going to be first act. Nine deuce offsuit is folded over to Mary. Mary. Lives in Golden, Colorado. She's an RN. Mary, Mary also a very famous TV star. You may not recognize her, but she does have appearances on the Captain Kangaroo Show as well as Howdy Doody. She got to meet Mr. Green Jeans. You and, kidding me? And Howdy Doody. Wow. Hello. Legend. I got 1.6 million. Why we're lamenting over Mary's Hollywood career. <laughs> Some action going on at the table here. Dan Herleman got an inventory of Jimmy Friska's chips. He goes ahead and limps in with 5-4. And Jimmy will check his option with Jack Seven of Hearts. And the flop is 7-3-9 rainbow. Jimmy flops the best of this. He hits middle pair. Dan picks up a gut shot straight draw. Dan's going to be first to act. He is going to semi bluff with his gut shot straight draw. Bet's 145,000. And now over to Jimmy. He makes it 300,000. Jimmy owns a bar and lives in Arvada, Colorado. 
And as we mentioned earlier, only into this tournament for $480. He is poised for a huge parlay on his money. 610% return <laughs> if he wins. <laughs> I got a guy who can get you that kind of money. Of course, he's upstate right now. I but was going to say, yeah. When he's done with his time, he would love to talk to you about some interesting opportunities. Dan Herleman went into the tank and decides to lay down the gut shot drop. And Jimmy Friss, the man who's been at this final table before, will rake in another pot as we head to break on the HPT. Hello, my name is Jimmy Frisk. I live in Arvada, Colorado. I'm a local bar owner, Long Shots Bar and Grill. In 2009, I got fourth place in the HPT. And uh, since that, um, I've learned that I need to have a little bit more patience. Uh, sit back and watch the cards and uh, not play as aggressive and loose as I typically do. If I won this, 293,000 is uh, a lot of fun. Definitely go on vacation and uh, probably take a week or two in Florida. Craig Casino with 48% of the chips in play. The question really is, Fred, who's going to be eliminated next? I think it's safe to say it won't be Craig, but really Mary, Dan, or Jimmy are all at risk right now. Next person eliminated is going home with over $67,000. I hope I didn't just put the jinx on Craig Casino. <laughs> if I did, I'm sorry. I just think right now he's in a great position to at least move up into the top three. A lot of bad things would have to happen to see him not in the top three, but as we've seen before, Chris, it's possible. Absolutely. Jimmy raises with Ace-9 offsuit to 260000 Craig is a big fan of these baby connectors. I have a feeling he's going to see a flop. Like me saying yes to a chicken fried steak, he is going to make the call. You raise a chicken fried steak. You're probably right. If someone puts a chicken fried steak out there, I ask for the country gravy and the scrambled eggs. <laughs> All right, Absolutely. Flop, All right, here's the flop between Craig and Jimmy. The flop is queen, ace, nine. Great flop for Jimmy. He's got two pair. Ace is up. Checks. Nothing here for Craig Casino. And Craig checks. Jimmy hoping to see Craig's aggressive nature come out. Didn't work. And the turn is another queen. Jimmy checks. Jimmy checks again, hoping that Craig's going to fire. This time Craig is going to do the bidding for him, but that's scary a little bit. Now Craig might be betting his queen. 250. Makes sense. He would check through the queen on an ace high flop. He hits the second queen. Now he's trying to get value, but Jimmy's going to see where he's at right now. Min raises. And he's going to get Craig to fold. How's the beer taste? Good. You're always trying to steal from me. Always trying to steal from me. Isn't that the big spread? I don't know if I want to be pointing that out to the guy who's got a lot of the chips at this final table. Well, Craig made a great point. Isn't that the big stack's job? Yeah, actually it is. Keep the pressure on. Blinds remain 60 and 120,000. Keep in mind, fourth place tonight pays 67,000. A $20,000 difference up to third place at 87,000. And then your nose starts bleeding. 146,000 for second, and our newest HPT champion will take home 293 grand. Dan Herleman's going to raise it up with 10-7 offsuit. It's 325,000 to go for Jimmy Frisk. Go. Jimmy is going to make the call with Queen Jack. We got two players. Dan and Jimmy will be heads up in this flop in our biggest event ever, a million dollar prize pool here at Golden Gates Casino in Blackhawk, Colorado this week. And our flop is ace, nine, eight with two diamonds. Scary texture here. Jimmy has a gut shot straight draw. Dan open ended. And Dan was the pre flop raiser. And he is going to semi bluff his open ended straight draw. 360,000 is the bet. Over to Jimmy. And Jimmy is going to give him credit for an ace and fold. And Dan Herleman is going to get a much-needed pot. For these short stacks, every chip counts. 
Seems like they're just kind of holding on to see who's going to get to that third position and then maybe fired up after that. Mary's got pocket nines. And this will be the first hand we've seen Mary play in a long, long time. She's been card dead and really, really being patient, not trying to splash around too much. 350,000 is the raise. And we're over to Craig with Jack Seven. He's in the big blind. And again, it looks like our chip leader is going to have to see a flop. Maybe got himself an addiction problem with seeing flops. Call 1-800-CAN'T-STOP-SEEING-A-FLOP. <laughs> I agree with this call here. Mary only made it 350 to go. The big blind is 120,000. He's also the big stack. And Fred is now one of Craig's enablers. Yes. I'll All be right. a sponsor. <laughs> Let's see the flop. It is 6-6-8. Six, six, well, Craig doesn't hit anything here. Mary's still ahead with her over pair. Mary has been playing so tight. You got to give her credit for her hand here. Absolutely. Mary throws out 600,000, and Craig folded like his cards were on fire. And Mary Fergie picks up a pot here at our final table. All right, now I'm joined with a very special guest. You know him, of course, from ESPN and the coverage of the World Series of Poker, Mr. Lon McCarron. Lon, how are you, sir? Good. Welcome to Blackhawk, Colorado. Funny running into you here on the street. Just happened to have lights and cameras know, set up. Right, I'll sit right. down. Sure. So uh, <laughs> you're obviously here to play our event. You did play the event. and Tell folks how it went. I loved it. Uh, it, it was a great feeling. Uh, it, just the whole atmosphere uh, of the room, uh, of the people, uh, the friendliness of the, the dealers, everybody come up and and saying hi to me and everything. Sure. <laughs> when I was researching this interview, um, it, it says on your wiki page of all places oh, you, goodness. that you covered some Scrabble events. Can you talk about yeah, that? Oh, was it one Scrabble event? Oh, no, come on. This uh, is the National Scrabble let, Championships let's hear about we're that. talking about. <laughs> and, you know, let's give them some props. Uh, Scrabble competitors are, it's very similar to the poker sure. world, except they are even more degenerate. <laughs> If you can believe that, I mean, these people uh, sit there and memorize words in, in a dictionary, and, wow. and the way their mind works is just amazing. It is computer esque how how they work it and and how they the strategies and the board. And like any uh, endeavor, any sport, mm -hmm. when you get more into it, you you're so and you learn more about it the more you care about it. All right, Lon, it was a, a privilege and an honor to sit down with you and and good luck. And maybe the next interview you and I do will be at an H. PT final table where I'm handing you the cash. Wouldn't that be nice? Stay tuned. I'm tearing my eye already. Hi, my name is Dan Herleman from Tempe, Arizona. I'm a professional poker player. Yeah, I have a doctor of pharmacy, PharmD, and I learned to play poker when I was in pharmacy school in a home game with some friends. My brother was a professional poker player, so I kind of joined him and played a lot online and traveling some as well. I met my girlfriend Natalie in pharmacy school. She's a pharmacist now. Uh, she's very supportive of, of my poker playing. Winning this event would, would mean a lot to me. It, it, uh, the money would be great, but having the title would, would mean just as much. Well, Craig Skill, our chip leader with 7.8 million in chips. Dan, who we just heard from, right there in a dead heat for second place with 3.7 million. And, you know, Dan is one of the many people across this country who play poker professionally. You might not know his name, but Fred, great player. He's got game. Well, he boasts over $2 million in online earnings. I'd give that some respect. Yeah. Over 100 k in live play. So, yeah, he's definitely one to look out for. Okay, action's over to Craig, our chip leader. Craig says he will donate 1% of his winnings to the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans, that we also partner with here on the HPT. Well, Craig Casino right now taking a page out of Doyle Brunson's book. He's raising with 10 deuce, makes it 460,000 to go. Action's on Mary. Mary's a mother, grandmother, and a wife, and an archery champion. Also holds an MBA. And the fact that she's still holding chips and not folding should set off huge alarms in Craig Casino's head. She's been playing uber tight. She's got ace deuce, but they're suited. <laughs> 
Is she thinking that the big stack is just making a move on her here? Does she want to re-raise? Does she want a smooth call? She elects the smooth call option, and yeah, look at that. There's Craig going, <laughs> uh-oh. Two players. That definitely was an itch of I'm not feeling comfortable right now. <laughs> the flop is king, ace, four. Mary pulls way ahead. I don't think that's the flop Craig wanted to see, but he's going to bet it anyway. And maybe Mary will be concerned about her kicker. Let's see. I would think that if Mary's calling that bet pre-flop, she does not believe that he has an ace. Because why would she call with ace-deuce? What, are you going to hit the ace and then have to fold when someone bets India? Well, 600,000 is her decision right now to call. And she just kind of ho-hums, does it. And now I watch Craig. He's going to shut down. All right, here comes the turn. It is a 10 of hearts. Scary card. Craig now has himself a pair of 10s. Are you massaging the pot, Mary? What does that mean? <laughs> As she winks, take that, Craig Casino. And Craig is going to lay it down. And Fred, I'm standing up. Here's to you, Mary. Way to play it. Once on the Howdy Duty show, also an alumnus of the Captain Kangaroo show. She's a star. She's an educated MBA. She's an archery champion. And taking Craig Casino to school on that hand. <laughs> well played, Mary Flurkey. And now Mary's starting to splash around a little bit more. She's going to make the call with King 10 suited. Didn't you just say she was uber tight a couple of seconds hey, ago? Hey, you're right here next to me. How many hands have you seen her play in the last hour? Okay, well, that's two. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a point. Jimmy calls with King 4 over to Craig with 8 deuce. And he will check his option. So we have three players. Mary limped, Jimmy called, Craig check. Let's see a flop with three players in this hand. The flop is four, 10, Jack. Craig sitting with just eight high after this flop. Jimmy has got bottom pair. Again, Mary pulls ahead, flopping middle pair. Two hearts on this board as well, so Mary's got the flush draw. Jimmy's first to bet, and he bets 160,000. Craig folds, now back to Mary. And Mary with middle pair and the second nut draw is not going anywhere. I've got a feeling this entire bio sheet from Mary here is a farce. This, <laughs> there, nothing here is truthful. She is a very good poker player. The turn is a king. Mary now has two pair, kings and ten. Jimmy also hits two pair here. This could get dangerous as he checks over to her. Mary's going to do what I think he wanted. She's going to fire, bet 600,000. Uh, Uh-oh, this could get very ugly for Jimmy. Does he want to go for it all now? He does. He is all in. And Mary with two pair and the second nut flush draw. This is the part where you say call, Mary. <laughs> you don't need to wait for the chips to be counted. You just say I call. But she is going to wait for an inventory. She's going to find out that it's 715000 to call. You off? Well, Mary, with two pair and the second nut flush draw, is not making the snap call here. Bringing in the 600 so she can get the remainder. Is that okay? Just double, just six more. Chris, you're four-handed at a final table. You can't get them all in with this kind of a hand and that draw. We'd already seen the river, and Jimmy'd already be doing his exit interview <laughs> if I was Mary right now. She okay, will make the, call. the call. Flips over King Ten of the And hearts. Jimmy is drawn paper I'm thin dead. for a win. Jimmy is hoping over. for a four to pull this out of the four. fire with a full house. A jack would give him a chop. <laughs> Otherwise, Mary is going to send Jimmy to the rail in the same spot he left back in 2009. I get two pairs. Good. The heart's already up. And the river is a seven, and that will do it for Jimmy Frisk. It's Deja Vu, 2009. He finishes in fourth place. Difference is back then he cashed for 40 grand. Tonight he leaves with $67,000. All right, Jimmy, the last time you were at a final table with the HBT, fourth place. Tonight, another fourth place. How do you feel about your play? I feel great about my play. I got short stacked and uh, just guess I was destined to get fourth again. All right. Well, hope to see you again and uh, congratulations, brother. Thank you. All right. We've got more final table action coming up. 
Welcome back to the HPT. I'm Chris Hansen along with Fred Bevel, and it's time for our pro tip of the week with 2004 World Series of Poker main event champion Greg Raymer. Now tonight's topic, don't you hate it when you sit down at the poker table and the person immediately to your left is a giant slob? I want to talk to you about something very important with respect to your poker game, but it has nothing to do with improving your chances of winning. This is just your etiquette, your behavior and mannerisms at the table. Now, what you really don't want to do is to be that guy who's doing all the crazy, wild, silly stuff at the table. I mean, it might be funny, it might be amusing, you might think it's going to get you some TV coverage if you're at a televised event. But the truth is, you're just a jerk at the table. No one likes you and it really isn't going to help your bottom line. Bad etiquette, over celebrating when you win, being a jerk when you lose, none of that's going to help you be a better player. And it might get you on TV, but do you really want the whole world to know that you're that guy? So control yourself, have reasonable etiquette, behave appropriately, be polite. All of these things will not directly make you a better player, but it's like anything else. The more class you show, the better you tend to do for some inherent reason. So be a classy guy, be fun at the table. You're gonna actually find out that somehow, for some unexpected reason, it makes you more of a winning player. Well, here's our updated chip count. As you can see, Mary is the new chip leader and Boo hoo hoo! Craig Casino <laughs> loses his chip lead for the first time of the night. Dan is our shortstop. Well, there's not much of a difference between uh, Craig fun. and Mary. All right, here we go. Dan's first act, 10-4 off suit. Third place again now tonight is 87,000. Second place, 146. And our champion is just under 300,000 in cash. Well, now that we're playing three-handed, Dan's opening the range a little bit. He's going to raise it up with 10-4 off suit. What did Dan do there? Yep, dead button. Craig Casino yes, now on the decision. Dan to a raise of 350,000. You know, Craig's wife, her maiden name, Slot. No way. Way. Casino and Slot the were casino dating. The Casino Slot wedding. Yes. <laughs> what I wouldn't have given to have been there 36 years ago. And congratulations to the two of them. Also have five kids and six grandchildren. Craig re-raises with ace three. Mary says, I want none of this. Gets out of the way, back to Dan. How do you feel about stealing the blinds now, sir? 1.4 million in the pot. A little over half a million to call, but 10-4, not good enough. And Craig Casino is going to do what he has been doing pretty much all night long here at this final table. Seeing a lot of flops and raking a lot of pots. Blinds are 75, 150,000 with a 20,000 chip ante. Baby gap connectors for the chip leader. More importantly, the button for the chip leader. He is going to limp. King four for Mary. Mary opening up her range a little bit now that we're three-handed. Oh, there's just three of us. We're all at this end of the table. Let's go ahead and play. Dan's going to check his option with just 10-6. TJ, let's go ahead and see. So Dan, Craig, and Mary, no relation to Peter, Paul, and Mary. We'll see the flop together. And the flop is eight king six with a couple of hearts. Dan flops bottom pair. Mary hits top pair. And Craig, well, he saw another looking. flop. <laughs> Everyone's checking to the turn, and it's a 10. Dan now a two pair. Dan deciding what to do. You've got a uh, straight draw out there. You've got two hearts out there. Kind of a scary texture to slow play two pair. And it looks like he is going to raise. He's going to make it 1.05 million, so it's 650,000 to call. A tough spot for Mary here. You've got top pair in a three-handed game. Doesn't look like Mary's going anywhere, Chris. She's grabbing chips. Looking like she's about to make the call. Her and Craig Casino back and forth here in the last couple of hands as far as the chip lead goes. And Mary is going to let it go. A wise read there. Boy, she grabbed the chips looking like she was going to call. I don't know if that was just posturing to see what Dan would do or if she was getting ready to do it and then changed her mind. Whatever it turns out to be, she made the right call and let it go. 
Good play by Mary here. She didn't overvalue her top pair. She figured the young pro must have been betting with something and saved some chips. Now she wakes up with another good hand for three-handed poker. Ten king suited on the button. And she will raise to 600,000. Raise it up to 600. Pocket jacks for Dan. 600,000. I'm all in. All in. He is going to move all in. It's the big raise for all the chips he has in front of him. And now back to Mary. And we will see if she will call an all in with King 10 of clubs. I think we're both voting negative there. And, and Mary's thinking the exact same way I was. Dan knows that if he pushes them all in there, Fred, what, three hands maybe that call you? Absolutely. Four maybe tops? You're absolutely right. Mary is a tight player. Craig Casino maybe makes Craig that call. <laughs> <laughs> we know he loves to see him some flops. Here he goes with suited ace four. Getting involved on the button. Raises it up to 375,000. Mary folds. Back to Dan from Tempe, Arizona. I'm all in. All in. He's going to get them all in the middle with ace jack. And Fred, I think he's using the same math that he was before. You know what? I have ace jack. There are only a very few select hands that Craig is going to call me with here. Over four million to make the call. There is no way Craig Casino can make this call. You're absolutely right. He does lay it down. Wow, Dan Hurlman is making a run to this $300,000 payday. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm from Golden, Colorado, and I want to be the first woman in Colorado to win the Mile High Poker for HPT. Yes, I have a vast uh, bit of experience in TV myself. I've been on Captain Kangaroo and Howdy Doody as a child. I have not called my husband. Um, I've called him twice earlier today to let him know I was advancing, but I haven't called to tell him that I made it to the final table. Um, we just got new cell phones yesterday. I got a 4G phone and I don't know how to use it. I can't. Craig Casino back with the chip lead, but the biggest story here at our final table since we went three-handed, Dan said, that's it. I'm taking the bull by the horns and the tail, and I am turning this into my well, poker Craig table. Casino. He has caught fire in the last few hands. Momentum definitely on his side. And right now, Mary Flurkey is on the button. Mary Fold, we're over to Dan. It's almost like right now you have two players trying to hold on and one player who's trying to grab all he can. I like the latter as the better strategy. He's yeah, going to raise it up, makes it 400,000. Uh -oh. Raises to 400 by Dan and Craig. Craig Casino, he loves him suited connectors. He's going to make the call. And once again, Craig's terrible addiction to seeing a flop is rearing its ugly head. I would not advise. Hello. Flop is 9, <laughs> 10, 9. Craig is flop trip nines. Pretty good. Dan, Dan would just ace high. That doesn't make it right. Actually, three-handed, I'd probably call with eight. I probably would have, too. <laughs> who, who am I to judge? They both check. Here comes the turn. It's a five of diamonds. Dan's going to be first to act with ace high. Is he ready to do something? Dan the pre-flop razor will remain silent. And Craig is going to take the lead. Bet's half a million. Thinking that, well, if Dan is on some kind of draw here, I'm going to make him pay for it. Oh. Dan makes the call. Dan is going to float the turn here. And with that call, that might actually enter into Craig's mind that maybe that's what is going on. As we can see, Dan is drawing dead on the river. Craig can only lose if he folds. And the river's another five. Now Craig has a full boat. Again, if you see too many flops, this kind of bad thing is going to happen to you. <laughs> Well, now Craig is just in value town, hoping to put out the right bet that Dan is going to pay off. Remember, earlier we saw Dan make the call with just ace high against Craig, and it was a good call. And so Craig is now going to bet 800000 and action is on Dan. My experience usually tells me they will call you once with ace high. The second time usually doesn't happen. Unless it's you making the bet, they call you every time with ace high with an alarming success rate. <laughs> when I play ace high, usually is the nuts. <laughs> 
But a much different situation here for Dan. I call. The board is double paired. He has ace high. He is going to make the call, and he is going to see that Craig Casino flopped a trips, rivered a boat, and abruptly has taken away the momentum from Dan Herleman. Blinds continue on at 75,000, 150,000 with a 20,000 chip ante. Five ten of spades for Dan on the button. Raise 350. Dan's going to raise it to 300. Why not raise? He's going to make it 350,000 to go. Jack seven of clubs for Craig. And he needs to get his fix. He calls. <laughs> he wants to see another flop. Queen 10 for Mary. I have a strong feeling the addiction might spread over to Mary. Mary makes the call. Three players. And she makes the call. So all three players here will see a flop together. Mary and Dan sharing the 10. And here comes the flop. It is five, deuce, seven with two clubs. Bet Craig bets, nine. Craig bets 900,000 over to Mary. Over to Mary. she cagey enough to put out a bet here? Not with this kind of traffic. I think Mary's plan the whole time was to hope to hit the flop, and if she didn't, let these two aggressive players go at it. Oh, well, she's going to fold. And now over to Dan. This could be scary for Dan. He's got a piece of this flop. I'm all in. All in. He did what I was afraid he was going to do. He's going to get him all in the middle. Can't blame him for this play. He got a piece of the flop, and Craig's an aggressive player. You know, Dan really picked up momentum a couple of hands ago when he started making that all-in move. But, Fred, that was doing it pre-flop. After the flop, with Craig having top pair and a flush draw, I think here at just under 3 million chips, this might be the breaking point for Craig. I think we're going to get a call. Right now it's amazing in one minute time how your entire week will just flash in front of your eyes. Every single hand you've played all comes back to you. And right now it all equals a call for Craig Casino. And he's going to see that he is in the lead and has right now a hammer lock on moving this to heads up. Craig Casino does a gut check, makes the right call. And now he just has to fade a 5 or a 10 or running spades. And it'll be him and Mary Flurkey for the championship. Here we go. The turn is an ace. And now a five or a ten are the only hopes for Dan Herleman. Let's go ahead and see the river. And the river. It's a nine. Oh, heart stop for a moment. Craig Casino is going to go heads up with Mary Flurkey. And congrats to Dan, who leaves us in third place. Third place. It's pretty disappointing to go out that way. It's definitely a mistake, I think. So I'll learn from it and uh, be, next, be back for the next HPT, hopefully. Thank you very much, James and Dan. When we come back on the HPT, our biggest first place prize ever. Welcome back to the HPT. Let's get back down to the floor at our final table. Well, Craig Casino started this final table with the large chip lead, and Fred, he starts heads up that exact same way. Three quarters of the chips in play belong to Craig Casino, but Chris, we've seen it before. Do not count out Mary Flurkey as she is just a little over four million in chips. Mary's gonna move down to seat five. Craig's gonna move over to seat two, and heads up poker begins now. Mary looks down at Jack King offsuit. Mary been playing tight most of this final table. When we got shorthanded, she opened her range a little bit. And now look at this. First hand heads up. She's going to make it 650000 to go. And pocket sixes for the chip leader. Call. Just get them all in. He chooses just to call, though. Please get the cell phones on. Not vibrate, please. Thank you. Mary is from just down the road in Golden, Colorado. Craig is from Winfield, Illinois. Meeting at our final table, and the flop is 10-5 queen with two clubs. Well, Craig is just sitting with a pair of sixes right now. Mary flops an open-ended straight draw and elects not to bet it. Let's go ahead and see the turn card, please. And the turn is a nine of clubs, and Mary now makes a straight. Good and bad. Mary hits her card for a straight, but a flush draw gets made now. Mary with a second nut draw if another club comes. Craig is going to check. Mary looks like she's going to bet. 600,000. 
is the bet, and Craig lets his pocket sixes go. Just too much mojo on that board for pocket sixes. First blood heads up will go to Mary Flurkey. And now Mary ready to go again, looking at ace, 10 of diamonds. Mary makes it 475, over to Craig. We're over to Craig. One million. Craig, re -raise. Craig with queen jack is gonna re-raise, makes it a million straight. Call. Call. And Mary's gonna flat and this Mary pot, now has over call. two million Craig. chips in it, as we play for 293,000, the biggest payday ever on the HPT. The flop is six, nine, queen with two spades. Craig pulls ahead, flops top pair. Call, huh? Million again. One million. The bet is one million. He fires out one another million. million in chips, and now Mary Flurkey with no pair, no draw. And she elects to fold, which is the correct play here. And Craig shows her that he indeed had top pair. And Craig Casino scoops a pot that is oh, now that worth well over the, two million uh, in chips. And Mary Flurkey is now needing a double up quickly. Blinds continue on at 75, 150,000. Pocket jacks for Craig Casino and the picture of his grandchildren. Craig is going to raise it up, makes Raises it 500,000 to, to go. Ace eight for Mary. I'm all in. That is a re Mary's going to go all in, and Craig Casino is not going to go anywhere, Chris. He is going to make the call, and here we go. Pocket Jacks versus Ace Eight suited. The biggest tournament in HPT history with a million dollar prize pool all comes down to this hand. Craig Casino has the lead. Mary with an ace and the clubs looking to get lucky. $293,000 hangs in the balance for tonight's winner. Will it be Craig Casino? Here comes the flop. You got your it is seven, nine, five with two clubs. Great flop for Mary Fred. She's actually pulled ahead in the percentages. Statistically, Mary is favored to have the best hand. She's flopped a nut flush draw. She also has a gut shot straight draw, and she also has a live card in the ace. And the turn. It is a queen of spades. Well, Mary is now down to an ace or a club or a six. I think it's coming. I feel it. I feel it. And Jessica, let's go ahead and see the river card, please. And here we go with the river. It is a deuce, and that will do it. Mary Flurkey is in second place, and now climbing on top of the mountain with the biggest payday ever in HPT history is Craig Casino. Now, you told me before we started, you hadn't told your husband, <laughs> when do you get on that cell phone that you can't figure out and tell him you're going home with over almost 150K in your pocket? Uh, I'm not going to tell him until I get home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mary. Well, if you want to hang out do some drinking with us, we'll be here. Thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All right, now I'm joined with Ashley from the Golden Gates Casino and poker room manager, Joey McAluso. And we are standing with the cash, $293,000. Now, before we present the cash to uh, your name, first of all, Craig Casino. Yes, sir. What a great name, my friend. You know, what, do you, what can I say? I was born with it. This is the biggest prize, first place prize we've ever given out on the HPT. So you're a very lucky man so with no further ado let's hand over the cash so this really Thank sinks in. so craig casino i just love saying that craig casino you've now got the cash in your hand how's it feel it feels really good i, I appreciate it uh, it's a lot of hard work i haven't slept much like five hours and two days but it was well worth it what a week on the HPT, our first million dollar prize pool, our biggest champion dollar amount ever. And who would have thought that in the end, 
a casino would leave the casino with all of that money. Quite unbelievable. Congratulations to Craig and the rest of our final tableists and everyone who made it such a great week here in Blackhawk. Now, do you think you've got what it takes to sit at our final table and win some unreal cash? Well, then log on to hptpoker.com to find out about our upcoming events. For James Larson and Fred Bevel, I am Chris Hansen. We'll see you next time right here on the HPT. Thank <laughs> you.